Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Dilting with Hannah. I'm Hannah here today to do a craft project. This is a Halloween related craft. Um, you can make it a fall craft if you wanted. That would be pretty easy to do. And it'll also um, give you something to do with all of your mostly used candles or empty candles or whatever. Um, if you're like me, you are addicted to candles and um, you know, they get to a point where there's like an inch of wax left, but like the wet, the like wick things are too short and so they like go out or like one of them doesn't work anymore and then it's all uneven and it's annoying and then you just get a new candle but then you keep the old ones because you're like there's still wax in here but like not enough wax. So here's what we're gonna be doing today. In the Halloween spirit we're gonna be making a Franken candle, okay? And we're gonna have make a use for the empty jars. So here's what I mean by that. Um these are all my candles. Okay that's not true. Here are some of my candles. Um, basically, <sighs> these candles are all like mostly empty. As you can see, there's just like a tiny bit left in each of them. Um, and I just can't, I just can't get rid of them, okay? Like there's some left in here, you know? Like I need to use it all, but like the wicks are too short and they are like, like one of them like won't work once it burns for a little bit. So um, I just stopped burning them, but I can't get rid of them. So here's what we're doing. We're going to melt the wax out of all the candles and pour them all into one of the jars. And then we're going to use the jars to make Halloween decorations um, for the empty ones. So if you're interested to see how I do that using a few of the um, crafty items I have here, then keep on watching. Okay, I've got all my candles. I think I have 10. Um, so we're gonna melt the wax. This is actually a method I haven't used before. I've done a video before where I get the leftover wax out of candles to reuse the jar and I poured boiling water into the wax and it kind of makes it pop up to the top. But I want all the wax to be melted so I can pour it into a Franken candle. So we have to choose which one we want for our Franken candle. And I think I'm gonna use this one because this kind of textured top um, isn't really gonna work as well for the project that I wanna do. So I'm gonna make this one my Franken candle and hopefully I can get the um, cover off. But basically what I mean by Franken candle is it's just gonna be all of the wax poured into one. So I don't really know what it's gonna smell like, but Sophia Nagard did this. Sophia, sorry, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Sophia um, on YouTube did this and I don't think it smelled too bad. So um, there's an array of scents here. So we'll kind of see what that ends up smelling like. So basically in this pot skillet, I don't know what to call it. It's kind of half and half. Um, there's just like about an inch of water and I'm heating it up right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off. Um, I don't need, wait, I need what? I need wax or I need, Wicks. Hmm. Mm hmm. Whatever. We'll cross that bridge later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and melt all of them so that I can get the tiny. What are these called? Wicks. Right? I'm going to get the tiny wicks out. So we're just going to set them in here and take the lid off so that pressure doesn't build. I shouldn't say it takes super long to melt. I would think. And we're going to let that boil. Well, it's boiling. We're gonna let it melt the wax. I hope it breaks the glass. I hope it doesn't break the glass. I'm gonna turn it down. Please don't break the glass. Okay, update, it smells really good. Um, you can tell that the candles are melting, uh, mostly around the outside, especially this one. So once they've melted enough, I'm gonna use my tweezers that I use for my falsies to try to get the wax. Okay, why can't I think of the word? The wick, the wick out. So I realized too late that I don't have longer wicks to put in the new Franken candle. So I'm gonna have to like go to the hobby store and buy some, but I can just remelt the candle and put the wicks in and then let the candle harden again. It's like not a big deal, but not ideal. So we're just gonna get these so that they're fully melted. And I reduced it to kind of medium high heat because it was scaring me and I didn't want the glass to break, so. But it's still pretty boily. So, check back in when it's melted. Okay, 
So uh, I've done the first three or emptied the first three. So basically when all the wax was melted, I used the tweezers, pulled out the little like wax things. They have like a metal plate on the bottom. They're just glued in, but the glue melts when the candles are melting. And then I just kind of like quickly wiped them out with a paper towel carefully because they're hot um, when everything was still hot. And <clears throat> this is the first Franken candle. It's very scary black. Um, so I'm gonna pull it out. Um, I ordered some, I went to Hobby Lobby and they didn't have any wax um, thingies. So I ordered some. So I'm gonna have to like remelt those and put wax in it. But we're gonna have probably at least two, maybe three Franken candles, which is fine because I don't need a ton for my project. So I'm gonna take this one out and then melt some more. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I do this. These are ready to be taken out. So I have a plate here with the other wax. I'm gonna try to do this and hold the camera at the same time, but it's kinda hard. So I just try to grab it as far down as I can and just wiggle. It comes right out. And then I keep doing that with the other one. Okay, I have my two Franken candles. Um, this one is definitely like a black color, and this one has a little bit of red. So um, those remnant candles made two Franken candles, and I have no idea what they smell like because there are so many smells going on right now that I just don't know. So I'm just gonna let those set up. And then over here, over here we have all of the empty candles. I kind of wiped them out on the inside. It's not a super big deal that they're like super clean and you'll see why, uh, but they don't need to be perfect or anything. And I also didn't bother taking off the labels or anything because we're just gonna paint over them. So I just left them as they are. Um, but the bottom labels do come off pretty easily if you wanna take those off, but I'm probably just gonna paint the entire candle. So I'm not super worried about it. So now that that's done, let's talk about all the things you're gonna need to complete this craft. So obviously candle jars of any shape, it doesn't matter. Um, they don't even really have to be candle jars, just like any jar works. Um, it can be plastic, glass, whatever you want. Um, just something that you don't mind painting over and hot gluing and stuff. Then you'll need some rocks. Uh, these are the rocks I have. I got them from the yard. <laughs> I stole them from the landscaping at my apartment complex. Sue me. Um, so yeah, I just picked some random ones. I don't know, just whatever ones I thought looked nice. Um, and then you're gonna need some sort of like rope or twine. This is like a wire wrapped stuff that like can bend to like whatever shape you want. Um, but you can use like twine or jute or anything that you have. That's just what I happen to have on hand. Um, I have paper plates because this is what I like to use for my paint. Um, I have a Mod Podge, it's the matte kind. Um, so, to get the effect, I would definitely recommend matte, but if you prefer glossy, that's totally fine too. In which case, you might not even need a Mod Podge spray or any type of sealant spray. Um, you could probably just use paint, but I want a matte finish, and I don't think my paints are matte finish, so I got matte Mod Podge. And then you'll also need a hot glue gun. I have a lot of hot glue guns for some reason, so that. Um, I might use some glitter, so I went ahead and grabbed my glitter. I have this black glitter that I really like, so I might use some of it. We shall see, but glitter is optional. Depends on what kind of look you're going for. Um, this is a Halloween craft, like I said, so I'm definitely going for something more like spooky, but if you're going for something kind of more like cutesy and glam, you could definitely use some glitter. Um, and then you'll need like an array of paint brushes and paint sponges. Um, I just have a bunch here. These are watercolors, I'm not using those. They're just in this, so. And then, of course, you'll need a variety of acrylic paints, preferably black as your main one, which I really hope I have black because I just realized I did not check to see if I had black, so we'll find out. <laughs> okay, so that's what you'll need, pretty much, in a nutshell. If I forgot something, I'll cover it as we continue. And I'll list the full list of, like, supplies in the description box in case I forgot something. A comprehensive list will be below. Okay, let's get started. Okay, it is the next day. Um, I went to dinner and then I went to bed last night so I didn't finish. Um, that's what happened. So the candles are done. Um, they ended up looking like this. They were like really dark obviously when the wax was hot but now they're like this pretty orange and green color. 
which is really nice. Um, I think they look really good, like fall candles. Um, as I've said a hundred times, there's no wick in here, but that's okay because I have one of those like uh, warmer plate things that melts candles without fire. So yeah, so let's talk about the smell. <laughs> um, I forgot to keep track of which ones I put in each candle, but Based on how the empty jars are sitting over here, I think that this green one, which is the first one that I made, I think this one is mainly, I can smell the this one, which is winter, and this one, which is chestnut and clove, and that makes sense because this one had the most remaining in the candle. Um, so those are the ones I smell the most for that. And then this one, the orange one, um, I smell a lot of the pumpkin apple which is awesome because that is actually my very favorite candle. I buy a new one of these every single fall season. I have my new ones over there. Um, but that's the one I smell the most for that, which is good because that's my favorite. So it's also a very strong smell, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, so those are my new candles. Got two full candles out of all of the remnants, which is awesome. So we reused that and now we're gonna reuse the containers. Basically, what we're going to be making is um, like witch jars or like potion ingredient jars. And I think I saw this originally on like Instagram or TikTok or something. Um, I'm gonna do it a little different, but um, same idea. And if I can find the video, I'll shout it out uh, in the description. Cause I don't remember. I watch a lot of TikTok, so. Um, by the way, you should follow me on TikTok. I'm like trying to be famous. I have like 17 followers now, so be one of them. Um, okay, so let's just get started. Okay, I'm gonna take my first jar, um, and the first thing we're gonna do is choose our design. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick a side that I wanna write my words on or draw my design. And in the original video I saw, um, they used hot glue for this. Um, but I think hot glue is kinda hard to work with, so I grabbed puff paint. This is not in the normal paint aisle, it's in the t-shirt crafts aisle. Um, this is meant to be used to draw on t-shirts, but it's like a three-dimensional paint, so I had to buy more. I had a bunch, but I just decided black would be easier to use, but honestly, you can use any color if you happen to have some sitting around. Any color is fine. We're just going to paint over it. We just need the like three dimension business. So basically, I'm just going to decide like what I want to be in my potion jar, um, which ingredients or baby skulls, like whatever you want to write. So when I think about things that you would put in a potion, hmm, I'm gonna write Eye of Newt. So I feel like that's something like from Harry Potter. So I'm gonna write that on there. my design um, you definitely want it to be pretty thick so as you can see from the side it's definitely like raised up because we're gonna paint the entire jar black so we want to be able to see this once we paint over it so it's all gonna be one color okay so the disadvantage of using the puffy paint versus um, hot glue is hot glue will dry down almost immediately this might take a few hours but on the other hand, I think this is much easier to work with and I just prefer it. So I'd rather wait a little longer and have it be easier to work with, but it's totally up to you. If you'd rather it be quick and dry down almost immediately and be ready to paint the next layer, then I would just use hot glue. So I'm gonna continue doing that with the rest of my jars and then um, wait for them to dry. Some of them I put some little extra, I don't know, designs you could draw on something if you wanted or whatever. Um, but for the most part, they're all done. Um, my only tip that I noticed as I was like doing this that might help is try not to like drag your puff paint tip 
like you would on a pin, like you're not gonna touch down on the glass to draw. Um, you need to raise up and kind of go in even strokes to create that 3D effect. So that was my only tip that I learned as I was doing this. Um, this is my first time doing this, so I'm kind of just sharing things as I go. So we need to let that dry. It might take a while, um, especially because I had to make it so thick to be puffy. So um, I'm just gonna let it dry. Um, it is 10.45 a.m. right now, so I'll let you know when it's dry. Uh, we're going to the movies later, so it might be after that before I can even do anything with it, or maybe tomorrow, so we'll see. Um, but like I said, if you wanted to dry down faster, I would use hot glue, but hot glue is hard to work with, so you do you. Okay, I'll check in later. Hi, it's like three days later, so we're gonna um, continue on with our craft. Our jars are definitely dry. Um, so we've got the puff paint on them and now we're just gonna paint over the whole jar. Um, you can pick whatever color you want. I'm doing black and then I'm gonna do some like dry brushing and sponge painting on top of the black. But you can paint whatever colors you want. That's why the puff paint doesn't matter. You also have the option of doing the paint and then the puff paint. It doesn't really matter what order you do it in. It just depends on the effect you want. I just think it's easier to do the puff paint and the paint over it to kind of give it more of that like worn down look. It kind of takes away some layers. Like these jars are kind of old and spooky, but if you're going for more like cutesy fun, you could totally switch it up and whatever you want to do. Okay, so I'm gonna choose to paint the jars all black. So I'm gonna do that now with just some acrylic paint. So let's do it. Okay, now it is time to use the rocks. I've done one coat of paint on the jars. Um, they're definitely going to need some more coats. Um, you can see on here, um, on this one, there are some spots that are kind of like, they won't paint there. I'm assuming it's because of the wax, but honestly, especially because the jar is a nice green color, I don't really mind the effect, um, but it will need another coat maybe too uh, because it's glass and I didn't prime the glass or anything, but. Like I said, I really want these to look kind of like old, weathered and spooky. So I'm not really worried about it looking perfect. If you want it to look really nice and perfect, you could always prime it. Even trying the um, acrylic, the matte acrylic sealer beforehand might work better on the glass than just going straight in with acrylic. But I kind of want that old look anyway, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, so now we're gonna do the lids, um, which includes the rocks. So. Um, like I said, I got this from a TikTok or an Instagram video, I'm pretty sure, and I will try my best to find it and link it below. So this was not my original idea, but I think it's really cute, so we're gonna do it. So, um, I found these rocks in the landscaping at my apartment complex. They're all different sizes, shapes, and colors, and we are just going to glue them to the, oops. We're gonna glue them to the candle lids um, as like little handles. Okay. So I'm gonna take my first rock, I really like this one, and I think I want it to kind of set like this. So I'm gonna glue it on that way. I'm gonna just apply a bunch of glue to the base. I'm just gonna kind of glue around the base of the rock so that it's really sealed on there. And easier to paint. Ta-da! Now it's got a little handle. So I'm gonna do that with all of the lids.
Um, okay, I went ahead and did the first coat of paint on the lids. So I just painted everything, including the rocks. This is just one coat of paint, and then there's still just one coat of paint on the jars. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another coat of paint. Hi, welcome back. Um, it's been like a week. So sorry about that, but we're continuing on with our craft. Um, I just got kind of busy, so. Anyways, it's only it's been like no time to you, so you don't really care. But I'm gonna show you what I have right now. I've done two coats of paint on the lids, two coats on the body jar part of the candle, along with the um, puff paint lettering. So let's see what we have so far. Okay, these are all the jars. Okay, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, um, but you can see the lettering here. And it'll, I think it'll look much more pronounced once I do the kind of decorative part. Um, for some reason, this lid just like did not want to take paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another coat of paint on this lid. This one's like a little rough, but it's not as bad. This one's like definitely like paint strokey. I don't know what happened with this one. Like I did it the same as all the others and this one just kind of turned out weird. So I'm gonna do another coat of black paint on this one. And then I'm gonna do the dry brush technique on these other ones. Um, using maybe a couple different colors or I might do them all the same. I don't know, we're just gonna start with this one um, and see what we think if I decide to do other colors. So hopefully you can kind of see the lettering. Um, like I said, I kind of wanted them to look like old, like they've been sitting on a witch's shelf for years. So I didn't want the lettering to be like super obvious. That's why I liked to paint over it. But if you want the lettering to stand out more, obviously do it like in a different color or like after the paint or whatever. You, you can do it however you want but this was kind of more the look I was going for. So I'm gonna do the dry brushing now. Um, dry brush technique is just kind of like putting the tiniest amount of paint you can on a brush and just kind of like, just making it look like that weathered kind of like shabby chic look, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm gonna do. These are the two colors I'm going to use. Um, this one is called wine and this one's just brown. Um, I definitely, I know I want this wine color and I thought I'd grab this one just in case maybe I wanted a different color, but I definitely want the wine. I kind of like it. It's like a deep, obviously wine red. So I'm going to take the lid off. So we'll start with just the body of the candle. And then I'm going to pick like a kind of like bristlier brush, like a stiffer brush. I'm going to use this one. It's kind of like... Bristlier. I was using some more like smooth brushes to do the overall paint color, but I think I'm gonna use something a little more bristly. So I'll start with this one and see what I think of the outcome. So with dry brushing, you really don't need a lot of paint on the brush. So I'm just gonna put this much on my plate, barely kind of tap into it, put a little bit on my brush, and then you're basically just gonna tap off a good amount of the excess. I ain't no Bob Ross, but. So when I do a brush stroke, I just want there to be just like the tiniest bit of paint. If that makes sense. So. I'll start on the back so it's not directly on the lettering, which is where I want people to look at the candle. So here we go. <laughs> I hope you can. It's very subtle. So you can even do kind of cross hatching strokes like that. If you can even see them. I think it looks awesome. And I think I'm just gonna do this technique on the rock and not the actual lid part. Like that. 
that. And then I'll just continue that with this one. All right, we are all done with our decorative Halloween jars. I really love how they turned out. So they're kind of scratched and faded and um, old looking and everything, but that was exactly what I was going for. So I really love how they turned out. Um, I did the wine colored paint dry brush. Um, I ended up not even needing the Mod Podge spray. So that was kind of nice. Um, saved me an extra step because the paint was a matte enough finish for me anyway. Here is just kind of a close up look at each of them. Sorry for the dogs in the background. I just think they are so cute. So you could definitely put a little tea light in these or maybe even some candy. Although I would be careful about putting food in there because you can definitely still like kind of smell the candle remnants. So I feel like the food might end up tasting weird, but maybe some like packaged Halloween candy or something would be cute or just by themselves. I think they look super cute and festive. I'm just gonna kind of scatter them around um, for part of my Halloween decor. All right, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and found a little something that you could do with your mostly used Bath and Body Works or any other type of candle. Um, you can make them cutesy, you can make them glittery, you can make them creepy, you can do whatever you want with them um, for any occasion, really. So um, please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more fun crafts. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.